thanks for having me. I am the co-founder and CEO of a company called Runscope. You can go check that out some other time. Uh, I tend not to code on our product because my engineers will then hate me, so I tend to work on all of our side projects so I can continue to scratch the itch. Uh, we deal with a lot of APIs, and what I tend to run into are blog posts like this one with a curl command embedded on it that you can't read and you can't copy and paste. You can't easily edit when it's multi-line, and when you paste it in your terminal, it breaks repeatedly. And I got really tired of that, and so just before Christmas, I had this idea, what if we could take any curl command and turn it into a nice, pretty, embeddable version that anybody could put in their API documentation, uh, on their blog, on their website, and I checked for embedcurl.com, and it was available, and so I started working on that while I was bored at my in-laws over the holidays. And so that is what you see here. Uh, and so the way this works, uh, uh, functionality-wise, is you take a curl command, and I copied that one from the Heroku page. You paste it in here. You click embed uh, HTML. It creates a pretty version you can see down here. We'll zoom in on that. Uh, and now we have a couple of nice features on top of this. One, it makes copy to paste a lot easier. So all I got to do is click on it, and I get it highlighted, and I can copy it and paste that into my command line. Uh, when I'm done with that, if I want to just execute it right from the web, I can actually send this off to another community project site of ours, which is called Hurlit, and it fills it in uh, with the values, and I can just run this uh, from here. So you can see this should work and should return the Heroku JSON schema thing that they announced today. There it is there. All right, so now we have executable curl commands. Uh, and then the other thing you can do is you can uh, take this and then embed it in your blog like any other HTML embed. Uh, the one unique thing about this, though, is that it doesn't store any state. It actually uses the text of the pre-element that you uh, put the embed curl class onto. So we don't have to store any of your sensitive data. All we do is we process on the back end and spit out the HTML, but it's completely stateless. So uh, that way you can update them. You, again, don't have to come back and create uh, new embed curls every time you want to use it. You just have to put the script on your page once. But, uh, so that's how it works, but I also want to show you how it works on the, on the back end. So when I started down this project, I was like, great, I'm going to write a command line uh, parser. And I'm not really much of a command line parser type programmer, and so I was like, Python has to have a library for that. And I remembered we used arg parse for something else. And this got us off to a good start. But what it really needs to know is about all the different curl flags. And there are a lot of them. If you've ever have looked at the curl man page, I have now read it multiple times. But if you've ever looked at the curl man page, it is long. There are a lot of options. Some of them can be specified multiple flags. Anyway, it was going to be really difficult. And what I really needed to do was convert the input uh, into a more structured thing that argparse could uh, handle. And there was really an intermediate step that needed to happen there. Uh, my co-founder, Frank, who is way smarter than me, said, well, just use Schlex. And Schlex is a it makes it easy to write lexical analyzers for simple syntaxes resembling that of a Unix shell, which, sure, why not? It seemed to work. Uh, I pasted some curl commands into it. It gave me a dictionary back, and I had what I needed. And so, uh, uh, you know, Python, woohoo! Yeah, right? Uh, so, anyway, after playing with checks a little bit, I can actually show you the code. So, the way this works is uh, the curl command comes in uh, via post request, or if you're doing it in the embed, it actually embeds the curl command as base64 to deal with encoding issues, sends it over to our site. The site parses it and then sends back the HTML. Uh, here's where we pass in the curl command, uh, and then that passes it off to our parser. And our parser is actually preloaded when the site loads. We run this on our, our pr uh, production infrastructure to make sure it's up all the time. If we're not up, it actually gracefully falls back just to that pre-element, which is really nice. Uh, but this pulls all the data for all the different curl flags from this JSON file that describes the, the behavior of all of these different ones. You can see there are a lot of them. <laughs> uh, someday I want to do like curl jeopardy because I would be the king of it now after having read all of these. <laughs> all right, so uh, I'm still scrolling. 1330, oh, it's 1337 lines of curl. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, so anyway. Uh, that, that, that sort of preps arg parse to handle it. You pass in the curl command, we get this uh, JSON dictionary out. And then I have this really gnarly Jinja2 template that goes through, let me get the embed, and actually uh, there's all the CSS, but uh, handles all of the flags based on how they need to be handled uh, for all the, like, the ones that are like, verbose. You can do like dash VVV, right? That's a special case. That's the only flag in curl that actually works that way. So there's a case for that. Uh, some of them accept lists, some of them accept uh, just single values, there's string encoding. Anyway, it handles all of that. Someday we're going to open source this. It'll be available on our GitHub page. Uh, if you have any other questions about how it works, uh, please come find me, and I'll find somebody to explain it to you. And uh, that's all. Check it out. It's completely free, embedcurl.com. Thank you for listening.